Okay, so today's video is going to be replacing the bad microcontroller on one of these 2007 to 2014 um, GM instrument clusters, so the Silverado, Sierra, any of those kind of things. So this is going to turn out pretty similar. I, I have an older video showing how to do this exact same thing. It's just... Uh, little bit older I've gotten a better camera since then so I figured I would film this again uh, so you're gonna need uh, one special tool that you probably don't have on hand is something to do JTAG with uh, I use the Seger J link myself because what we're gonna be doing is taking this microcontroller right here off the board and putting a blank one on there so you're not going to be able to program it with like a tech 2 uh, or, or any of those kind of uh, tools because the new microcontroller is completely blank that we're putting on there so it's not going to know how to communicate with uh, this chip right here which is a transceiver uh, for it to do its CAM bus communication so once this chips off here this board does not know how to communicate anymore um, well, what we're going to do in this video, since this one is a partially failed microcontroller, uh, we'll actually take the uh, dump of the microcontroller off and save it and use the exact software that was on here onto our new one. So that way we know we have the correct software, especially since this one, I received it as just a circuit board. I didn't actually get the entire instrument cluster. So I don't have the little sticker, which is how I had been saving all of my files. I'm now gonna start saving them based on the uh, part number down here. So that way, when I run into this in the future, I no longer have to go, oh, uh, I don't have software that works with it. So, because uh, there's two different generations of these boards, really. One has this three pin um, right regulator right here, and then the other one has four pins on it, has an enable pin, so that way the, the microcontroller can shut it off. Uh, it currently just shuts off the 12 volts to this when the microcontroller's not booted boot up. So it, the microcontroller gets its 5 volts from this 5 volt regulator here. It turns on and then it opens up this 5 volt regulator which then uh, activates all the motors and the, the screens here. So uh, the, the motors themselves are actually driven directly by the microcontroller. There's no uh, stepper motor drivers on this circuit board. Uh, I have run into a couple of them. Well, I've, I've run into one where the motor driver portion of this, the part of this microcontroller that drives the motor fails, and I replaced the microcontroller on it. It worked for a couple of months, and it came back, failed in practically the same way. Uh, it, it failed on that circuit that drives that, but it also then that time it failed uh, taking down the circuit that talks to the VFD. So I don't know what was going on with that one. I, I still haven't figured that one out yet, uh, but clearly replacing the microcontroller on that one wasn't the only problem it had, and I just couldn't diagnose it down to anything other than possibly uh, a discrete component like one of the ceramic capacitors uh, was just intermittently failing and taking down the, the motor or maybe it was getting flyback from one of the stepper motors and I, I really I don't have an explanation to why that one was failing so if anybody knows let me know down in the comment section on that uh, let's get into to doing this repair uh, so first we'll put this guy on here and then uh, then We'll take the chip off, put the new one on, and uh, continue from there. All right, so let's get the uh, flash off of this current MCU, so that way we, because this one it powers up when we give it some heat. It just is a bad CPU, so it slowly turns itself off and quits working. Uh, so we can still clone the memory off of it, though. We can get the flash off of this one to put onto the new one, so that way. Uh, we know we have the right software version instead of trying to go through uh you know my my pile of them that i've saved on my computer i just pull it off of this one make sure i get the right one back on there um so we're, we're gonna need to use our uh Seger j link which is what we're using to jtag into this if you have a different jtag tool you go with whatever you use um so yeah it, 
And since this is an EDU version, I can use JFlash to read. I just can't use JFlash to write. I have to go into JFlash Flash Lite to write. Um, okay, so we have uh, JFlash open, and we can see we're using the STSTR731F. V2, which is not actually what this one is, but it responds to all the same commands. The memory is mapped in the same location, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, target, connect. Well, first we have to power up the board, so let's power it up, and I guess it would help if I plugged in the board to you. There we go. Now let's see. We'll see if it'll connect Sometimes they will connect like this. Other times we have to um, heat it up first and then it can connect. So yeah, it did successfully connect. So now we can um, read out the flash. So target manual program, read back, read back entire chip. And there we go. We've now read the flash from it. We have our flash memory uh, of the microcontroller so yeah the this one uh very similar kind of flash going on in here as the 03 to 04s and the 05 06 07 microcontrollers but this one actually has a checksum in here so i i can't edit if you know how to f generate fine checksums in things that would that would be very useful so let's go ahead and uh save this file so we're gonna save the data I, I'm gonna save it as a Intel hex file it's just because that's what I like to use and I was labeling them by date and the sticker but since I don't have the sticker from this one because I just received the bare circuit board here I'm gonna use the circuit board number here so I'm just gonna first just do 08 or uh, up MCU and then um, that board number there so that way I know what this is in the future now if I get another one of these in the future that it's this board number and the microcontroller's dead on it I know this flash will work with it so I still have a useful flash in the future and that sticker also works um, you just need to have the sticker <laughs> with it to, for that information to be useful so it is this one's two Two eight one zero four one nine nine. All right, and save. Okay, so now I've saved it. So uh, yep, yeah, now I just gotta take this off, take the microcontroller off, and put the new one on. Let's continue on with. All right, so before I uh, start taking this microcontroller off, let's take a look at it and uh, see exactly how we diagnosed that this was a bad microcontroller. That 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 it was the issue. So here we just turn on the microcontroller, I mean turn on the, okay so now we've turned on the circuit board, let's see if it comes on, see if it boots up. These generally take uh, five seconds or so to boot up, and significantly more than five seconds have passed, and it's still not turning on. Now let's turn the power back off to it, take our hot air station. And just get everything nice and warm. Really, it's really just the microcontroller we're trying to get warm here, because it's the one with the issue. All right, just getting it warm. Not not trying to desolder it or anything. And now it should come to life. And there we go. It's now booting up. So. Yep, we, we've now confirmed that, in fact, this microcontroller is failing. So there's something internal to the microcontroller that when it's nice and hot, it'll work. Uh, and when it's not, it won't. Uh, can't, can't tell you for sure what's causing it. I, I haven't figured that, that out. I just I know it's a problem, so I'm not going to waste any more time trying to figure out what's going on with it. So what you see underneath the circuit board here is just a bottom preheater. It's definitely not required. This this circuit board does not have a ton of thermal mass. I do find using a uh, I do find using a bottom heater useful though because it helps with this conformal coating is 
also underneath it. It gets underneath it, so it really sticks to the board. That that extra heat underneath really helps. So that way, when we go take the microcontroller off, it doesn't take the pads off with it. So let's get this. Um, let's get some of this conformal coating off first. Uh, Got to just kind of scrape at a little bit, and get it off of there, uh, and then take a toothbrush and brush away all the little bits and pieces of it. Uh, you don't you don't want to really be picking at uh, like there because that's where you're getting at the traces. You don't want to accidentally cut a trace, but uh, it just just make sure you get most of this conformal coating off the top. Uh, it helps you melt that solder better, and you're definitely gonna have to clean it all off before you can put your new microcontroller on. All right, now we're gonna turn on our preheater before we do this. The other nice thing about using a preheater like this is you can slowly bring the temperature up instead of just blasting it all the way at the full temperature, which helps prevent warping, cracking uh, uh, of any of the solder joints here too. So it helps protect all of the chips around it um, or components around it, better word to use. So it protects all of those components around it. So we're gonna start at 150 degrees Celsius with the bottom preheater uh, and then bring it up to 200, uh, in, in between 200 and 250 is kind of where I, I go with it. And this one's just got a little uh, potentiometer kind of knob on there for controlling the temperature. This is, a, this is an older um, Hakko 853. Uh, is what I'm using. I got this used on eBay. I got a pretty good deal for it. it was, uh, right, right at a hundred bucks. Came with the uh, little metal shield on there. Not, not all of them come with have this. Uh, and then I just use a Omnivice to hold it up. Okay, so we're starting to get warm. So let's turn the temperature up here. Put some flux on because then we'll be soldering here. And really, we'll just wait till we start to see that saw, uh, that um, flux start to melt, and then I'll get the hot air station out. I like to, like I said, I like to let it come up to temperature slowly, so that way I'm not warping the board. Uh, it makes it less likely to lift pads and all of that, in my opinion, uh, in my experience. All right, so as we can see, most of this um, flux has started to melt. Some of it's not, but that's just because it's up on top of the chip. It takes longer for that heat to come up. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the hot air station. Okay, so first things first is we're just gonna drag solder around the whole thing. Uh, all I did off camera was line it up under the microscope and tack it down. Uh, that's just how I do them, is uh, I just tack down a couple of spots there. It's really tedious lining up the pins, no point in showing that. It's put the pins where the pins go. Uh, so I always just do a real quick drag solder, not under the microscope at all, uh, just to just get it done. Get, and then I come back and clean it up under the microscope. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, do that real quick. So now what we're going to be doing is just cleaning up our solder bridges that we have from the excess solder. Because like I said, we were just going for a, a quick run across it, uh, not not trying to get it on there perfect on the very first try. Uh, obviously, when you come across with the solder work, you end up taking up just a hair more solder than you need to. And you can just borrow that from the other pads. It, there's always plenty of excess
the camera like this for just a second so that way you can uh, clearly see me putting this on and then I'll switch over to the uh, screen view of the computer too so that way you can see running the software again. Um, I know in the beginning of the video I didn't show putting this on because I was planning on showing it now. Uh, so wiring this up it's pretty simple. We have the JTAG header here, as you saw earlier in the video, and then we get our uh, voltage reference and our ground from the voltage regulator there. Um, I just keep this little page of the data sheet. This is page 19 of the data sheet. It has the JTAG interface there, and I just wrote down so that way I don't lose track of it, and I recommend if you plan on doing a few of these, just do the same thing so that you pull it out of your folder whenever you need it. Uh, but the pins for uh, JTAG you know, on the microcontroller are 91, 90, 89, 88, and 87, uh, which go to uh, test point 13 is 87, and then all the way up, and they just go in order, and then um, all the way up to 91 being test point 9. So just between those ones are what we're working with here. So, and that goes, I wrote right here, my J link. Now, if you're using a different J tagging tool, you know, you, I'm not an expert on doing you know, microcontroller programming, and I, I, I definitely know you could use like a bus pirate and some other things that can do JTAG to do this that are not the Sega J-Link, but the software is nice and simple to use, so it's what I use. Uh, it, it holds my hand through the process, so it works good for me. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and put, put this on here. So uh, this first red one here is uh, V-reference. That's just the very first pin. So that's the bottom one of the voltage regulator. It comes out five volts right here. And let's turn on this stream extractor. And then ground is going to be just this one that we're going to use down at the bottom here. So, okay, TP9 is going to be uh, J-Link 13. So, yeah, we're going to just go backwards from it. So, 13. And then 7. Sorry, 13 and then 9. Okay, so we are connected here. We're all wired up, and it's powered up. Obviously, screens and everything's going to come on because this microcontroller is blank. So let's go ahead and open up J Flash Lite, and we need to change that to J Tag there. Okay, um, let's open our Intel hex file. And then we're just going to program device. And there we go. It's done writing to it. It should send it the reset signal and it should boot up. There we go. We now have a functioning microcontroller on here. So this was a successful repair. It was nice and short. Uh, I, I, know, um, I know I've shown it before on the channel, but uh, I just wanted to, to follow up on it. So uh, that, that really wraps up the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.